Hey everyone, welcome back to the Primal Blueprint Podcast. Today we have Dane Johnson. He is a board certified nutritionist who naturally recovered from a near-death experience battling Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. He is the founder of Crohn's Colitis Lifestyle, also the same website.com, and co-founder of the nonprofit eFund Your Health with the mission to empower the Crohn's Colitis community and bring alternative options to your healthcare system. Dane, so happy to hear about your story today because it's really inspiring and I um, you can look in the show notes and go check out Dane on social media. You will see some before and after photos, which are pretty traumatic uh, just to look at. Mm-hmm. So tell us, when did problems start in your life? When did you notice something was off? Yeah, it, you know, I was something, I noticed things, I mean, 14 years old, I randomly noticed that whenever I ate certain foods, I would get extremely bloated, tired. I couldn't stay awake after lunch. I said, what is wrong with me? I'd go to school, public school, and I'd eat food and then I'd be out like a light, you know, could not keep my, my eyes open. So there's little signs of delayed food allergies, little signs of uh, lack of proper digestion and, and fermenting uh, foods in my gut early on that now when I look back, I notice, but clear signs of ulcerative colitis came around 18 or 19 years old when I started getting blood in the stool. And, you know, for anyone out there who's, who's dealing with autoimmune and, and severe diseases and all that, you know, in, in my story, I think one of the, the main points is I was not, I did not come from this natural medicine background. I didn't, I didn't have any per, perceived notion that I wanted to be gluten-free. I ate regular American food. Like I had no interest, none in natural medicine. I just wanted to be a normal, healthy guy who didn't want to have to think about what he ate and what he did. Um, but then when I was 19 years old, all of a sudden I started getting blood in the stool and I did what everyone else did. I went to the doctor and I said, this is kind of weird. You know, what's going on? Well, what a, what a rough day. That's, that's a, that's yeah. a horrible day for anyone when they see that. Cause that uh, yeah. has since alarm bells everywhere. You must've been terrified. So, oops, excuse me. I so thought I, I thought the I doctor, felt myself. I thought I was like, what well, did I, did I, did I digest some glass? I mean, what, what happened? <laughs> Oh no! You know? <laughs> just just having just snacking on some broken glasses. Yeah, looking down, I'm like, did I? Is that other? Is that cherries? Are you beets? What was? You know, I was trying to figure it out. I had no idea what what was going on. So what did the what did the doctor say at that time? Did they diagnose it properly, or did you not know? No, what it was? no. Well, I mean, I was kind of scared. I didn't want to go to the doctors. I was I was a freshman or sophomore in college. I had enough time. You know, like yeah. I'm sure a lot of parents out there or kids are listening to this going. You know, you just, you just don't want to deal with it. I didn't want to deal with it. I just thought it would just go away. I said, oh, well, maybe, you know, maybe it was just some random and all that. Um, and so I mentioned it to my, my mom. She had never heard of anything like that. So she was just kind of like, I don't know, get a little worried. But, you know, she told me to go to the doctors and I didn't see, I only saw it sporadically. So the doctor said, well, you know, let's just keep an eye on it. They didn't really do much with it in the beginning. And, 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 and when you were that age, really no one was, talking about the stuff you and I are in the worlds that we're talking about. So it just, the information to you wasn't even available probably to figure out some of these alternatives. Uh, But then it got pretty bad here. So, uh, you know, when you're reaching a life or death scenario and you're talking about, and I think, didn't you have to involve some chemotherapy in this? Yes. Let's let's talk about how it got progressively worse because, you know, I know that people out there, as you talk to many people with Crohn's and colitis, they're going to identify with the symptoms that you have if, if they're similar. And so I think people need to hear how did it go down after blood in the stool? What else went on? Yeah, great question, El. It's um, so once the blood in the stool came, I, I, I was luckily already starting to get into fitness, right? Trying to build muscle, lose fat, like a lot of young athlete kind of guys. And so I started naturally cutting out certain poor foods, which did seem to help my digestive tract on the as well. So um, I was able to not really do much about it for about two years two, three years. Then around 22 years old, I started seeing more and more blood again. Now at this time I was uh, finishing off uh, college and I had gotten a very stressful nine to five job as I was supposed to, right? Get the job, get the, get the 401k, get all that stuff, wear the suit and tie, go to the office every day. So I had left my friends. I had left my 15 hour work, uh, work week as a college kid, which looking back was amazing. 15 hour load, right? And went into this working career, and all of a sudden, I just started getting more cramping, more pain, more urgency, more diarrhea. I was eating worse. I was, I was stressed with this new performance that I had to create in this job and making money and paying back student loans. And, and that stress seemed to be one of the, the main reasons that helped the root cause issues become 
more life uh, overwhelming to take over my life at that point. So um, around 23 years old, I started getting chronic blood. I started getting urgency, diarrhea. I started going to the bathroom around eight times, 10 times a day. I would usually go three times. And it was all like, oh God, I got to go now kind of thing. Oh, massive urgency. I mean, as a young, and as a young person in this world, you're 22, 23 years old and you can't control your bowel movements. I mean, you're over here thinking about dating and you're thinking about traveling and you're thinking about being able to go out to dinner with your friends. And all of a sudden you don't have 30 seconds to get to the bathroom. And that's, and that's a very scary thing and a shameful thing to deal with. And, you know, and how do you explain that to your parents? How do you explain that to your significant other or your, or your, your friends? How do you tell your boss what's going on? You know, and it's, it, it was, one of those situations. You know, it's embarrassing. Asked. I'm going to call it what it is. It's not yeah, to say that you should or shouldn't be, but it is embarrassing when you have a health yes. thing or something like this, because yeah. again, you kind of know from societal, like better not say anything. I might yeah. get judged or I might get rejected. Like what yeah. girl you're like, Oh, by the way, I might have to like have an ass blowout every eight times a day. Like, <laughs> it might prevent you from going and asking some chicks how to go dating, you know? Absolutely. You're absolutely right. It, it played a, it made a, huge mental shift in how I felt about myself as a man, as a growing man, uh, coming into manhood. It made me second guess what I could share with people. It made me feel like I wasn't good enough, that there was something wrong with me. Yeah. Um, and you pile that on top of the college experience and every other experience. And I've got to go build this career out of seemingly nothing because I'm this age now, you know, it was, it was a lot and it was, and it was hard. Um, I, yeah, I, I had dreams though. And I think for anyone out there who's relating with that, I think the one thing that really pulled me is I had things that I really desired in life that I was able to take the fears, put them down and start saying, okay, where do, what do I want to do? What do I want to create? Where do I want to go? And I, I kind of let my dreams lead me more than the fear of whatever's going on in my body. And so, you know, in the beginning, I had no interest in natural medicine. I said, get to the doctor. They said, get on prednisone, get on uh, mesalamine. That worked like a charm the first time I took it. I said, oh, wow, well, blood's gone. Here's my answer. No problem. Now, now mom on the back end, and I'm sure a lot of parents listen to this going, uh-huh. Mom on the back end was actually researching this and reading into this thing that we had never heard of called ulcerative colitis. And she was reading about the blood, the weight loss, the anemia, the chronicness of it, that you can't get rid of it, that people are getting their colons removed. She's starting to get very nervous. And she's like, She's not trying to get me scared because I'm just a kid, you know, just trying to get my life together. But she's also saying to me, hey, you know, Dane, this is uh, this is serious. This is something that you, we need to really look at. Well, you know, as long as the medications were working, I was going to use the medications. That's how I felt. But at the same time, I had quit my nine to five job. I had moved to Los Angeles to pursue a career in acting and modeling. Now, at 22 years old, I'm thinking, hey, this is the one time in life that I can go off and not need to worry about making money and and go do something like that, right? Well, lo and behold, I started getting some pretty, some pretty large success. I mean, I was just a kid from the country, from the woods, from the sticks. You know, I, I we had no natural medicine career, we had no actors. We Wait, where no, in the sticks are you from? What part of the <laughs> Haymarket, Virginia? Oh, hey, all right, yeah, okay, right. You're deep in there. That's right, right. So we were, I mean, it was at like an hour outside of DC, but when I was growing up, it was woods. It was woods, little roads. It was there was not much going on there. Small town, yeah. Small town. And um, so all of a sudden, I think this is one thing that really helped me get to this point is I started seeing things that I wanted, these dreams, you know, and I started uh, going after things that I was getting success. And then it was what I consider the most, the, what I felt like God had smited me. But here I was chasing this dream and I started booking Nautica, Tommy Hilfiger. I got signed with the biggest agencies in the world, I was traveling all around and I couldn't leave the restroom. I couldn't leave the restroom. I was on steroids. I was getting cystic acne everywhere. Blood in the stool. I was wearing two to three uh, different pairs of underwear every single day, just trying to hide it, trying to skate through life without this being a problem, right? And the only reason I was able to get my career going is because the prednisone was helping in the beginning, right? But as the medication stopped working and I had taken this new career as a young kid and had something really cool, a once in a lifetime experience that was kind of at my fingertips right there, it literally started falling away from me. I started losing so much weight that I couldn't do jobs. I started not being able to be 10 feet from a bathroom. I started, it didn't matter if I had a sip of water. It didn't matter if I had gluten. It didn't matter if I had uh, vegetables, whatever and I And then you did. just sort of get afraid to eat. Is that- Oh, extreme. Yeah, I just wouldn't eat. 
I, what I would do is I would usually just fast when I had to go be productive. And then I would try to, I would eat when I, when I, when, when I got somewhere that I knew was safe and I'd probably use the bathroom three to four to five times when I was eating and doing all that. So I noticed if I just didn't eat or drink anything that I could get, I would have less symptoms. And so I remember being on um, uh, Good Day LA doing the Tommy, uh, the Tommy Hilfinger segment. And I, I hadn't drank anything or eaten anything. I was about 35 pounds underweight and my vision was kind of going in and out. And I was on live television. Wow. And, and I just remember, you know, trying to move and got Tommy over here talking about my suit and how I look. And I, I'm, I feel like I'm two seconds away from blacking out and I'm just trying to like keep it together and look good, but I'm, I'm, I'm nervous as all can be. And this is a time when I don't have control of my bowels. So you want to talk about stress and shame. That, that, that moment must've been horrific in the moment of you being like, I don't know what's going to happen right at this like side. Anything can happen. And L also one of the best experiences of my life. I was a kid. I was put on, I was put on show. It's like, what, you know, I was from the sticks right. and all of a sudden I'm getting paid that I like, at the same time, it was like, I had quit my nine to five office job. I had moved. I didn't know anyone in LA. I had moved out there. I actually had created something of myself. Yep. And at the same time, I felt like God had given me this disease that had controlled my life. And I was pissed. I was so effing angry. Yep. I was, I felt like I was smited. Like it was like, like it was a sick joke. That's a, that's how I would describe because I have a similar story to you about like being in Hollywood acting and, da, da, da. and yeah. then I'm going out for serious regular roles or whatever yeah. and I get hit with hypothyroidism and I start to get really fat which enables disables me from these roles and <laughs> I remember being like this is a really cruel joke like this <laughs> is you know and and you and I both know this some of the best gifts in life come wrapped in shit oh, um, yeah. but you can't in your case kind of literally <laughs> yeah, uh, but, but, you, yeah. but, but you can't see it right then and there and these moments are tough they are like why me yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very angry. Very, very angry. And I remember, you know, my, my, I would call my mom, my dad, no one understood. And that's the hard thing. I think a lot of people out there can resonate. No one gets what you're going through, which is why me and Elle are here doing this. Cause we understand that pain. Yeah. And that's what drove us to get into these careers. And I'm much happier with this career. I'm much happier with this lifestyle than I was beforehand nowadays. Right. But, you know, in that moment, it was so painful. It was so imprisoning. It was like, it was right in front of me, but I couldn't get it. I, it was like, it was like a mirage. And uh, it ruled my life for a number of years. I wouldn't tell my agents. I wouldn't tell my managers. I wouldn't tell anyone. And I remember I was, I was, I, I had this really successful moment. I was booked for this huge campaign. And then they said, well, come in for digitals and take some pictures. And I was covered in cystic acne. I'm talking chest, my back covered in these pussing red, red, really disgusting inflamed like pieces of acne, but they're big and they hurt. Yeah. And I didn't know what they were, but I had been on prednisone for so long. I had had such leaky gut. I had such bad candida and bacteria overgrowth. I didn't know none of that. Knew. My doctor didn't know any of that it was. So they were trying to give me Accutane for my acne, which was just going to destroy the whole, whole problem even worse. And it just kept getting into more blood, more bowel movements. So, you know. And I want to highlight that because it's like, here, we're going to give you prednisone to mask the symptoms of yeah. something to not look at the background. Oh, yeah. now you develop some problems for the oh, friend yeah. zone. <laughs> Let's, we're going to keep this freaking patchwork operation going yeah. until you don't know six ways a Sunday, which one does what thing or what lack of thing. And yeah. it's a really hard uh, game to play. I've been in that game. I got that playing game. I got that game played on me. Um, so, <laughs> so after all this, so they're patchwork and all this stuff. And at some point you've got to be like, okay. I mean, well, I was, here's, let's look at the circumstances. I think a lot of our, the viewers can, can really resonate with this. I had no medical background. I had never researched any of this. I had never understood anything about diet. I grew up in McDonald's, Papa John's and whatever else was around in Virginia, you know, whatever people were eating, Applebee's, whatever my parents brought home. We ate, we didn't eat terrible, but we had no idea what we were doing. We just right. ate what was in front of us. We were all healthy individuals, but really not in the, when I really look at it. Um, I got, a, I got doctors at multiple hospitals telling me I have to be on these drugs. There's nothing I can do about it. Okay. Now I'm just a 22. By the way, I just want to say, they say this to everybody. They say yes. to everyone I've met who's had MS or had yeah. RA, sorry, yeah. never going to change. You're going to end up yeah. in a wheelchair. You're just going to have to take these medications forever. And if you ask them, well, can't you just retest the antibodies? Like they're going to be there forever. You're yeah. always going to have it. This is, um, mm, so not surprised it happened to you. Yeah, it was, and it was really a difficult uh, pill to swallow, but I willingly went on the drugs. I wanted, I wanted my life back. I didn't care. 
right? How many people can re- I just give me the needle, give me the biologics. I don't care. Just get this gun. And every, I went on Remicade, Humira, TPN feeding tube. I went on methotrexate, 6 MP, which gave me cold shivers at night. I couldn't sleep. Um, it gave me a, um, my liver started failing when they put me on that. I, I was on prednisone on and off for four years. I was on every different antibiotic. I was on, um, I was on budesonide. I was on, and then eventually when I hit 25, 26, you know, I had been messing with, you know, diets and reading and trying, and it felt like it was impossible. You know, I was reading these books of these people, these miraculous people who had changed their diet and taken a few supplements. And all of a sudden they had gotten rid of their disease, right? They had healed themselves. And I remember thinking like, this is impossible. There's no way, like maybe 1% of people could actually do this and just eat this like bone broth forever, you know, but I was going to puke my face out of like three days of trying some of these diets, right? I just couldn't do it. And so I was, I was failing. And then all of a sudden I was 26 years old and I, and I had some successes and some failures. I'd learned some great lessons. Um, There's a lot that happened in that middle, but that was a pivotal point at 26 because I was doing, um, I was working, I was doing okay. And all of a sudden I started getting these severe night sweats, cold shivers, extreme diarrhea, extreme fatigue, and my vision started going in and out. So I actually left a job and I, I, you know, I told the art director, I said, Hey, I can't, I might faint. I might actually collapse. So I drove myself to the hospital while I was driving to the hospital. My literally, my vision was going in and out. So I stopped at a gas station, took some um, emergency vitamin C to try to get some electrolytes in me, try to get me going, check myself in the hospital. And I stayed in that hospital for six weeks. They actually mm. transferred me to three other hospitals because my insurance wouldn't cover what they needed to do. They wanted to charge me out of pocket around a hundred thousand dollars. So, you know, I kept getting transferred. I ended up in this, this hospital where they didn't speak very good English. They didn't know what's going on. I spent six weeks there and I, I nearly died there. I nearly lost my life. So while I was there, I lost 60 pounds. Um, I went on four different antibiotics. I was on infused uh, prednisone, 200 milligrams a day of infused prednisone. And then they put me on uh, three grams of Dilaudid. Dilaudid is a type of basically legal heroin and it's seven yeah. times stronger than morphine. It's, so, it's highly abused by, you know, yeah, it's yeah. one of the like legal. Yeah. yeah. And I was abusing it. I mean, I was sitting there in extreme pain, feeling like I was pooping glass, hitting that button, like this stuff. hundred percent. I would be hitting that button. Yeah. yeah. So I was floating, you know, and, and um, it was like Thursday, December 7th or 8th, right in there where my family had flown out. They didn't know if I was going to make it to the night. I lost a lot of blood. I'd lost tons of weight. I was no longer um, aware or conscious so, um, you know, they didn't know what was killing me. So my mom kind of took over as the doctor and she started looking at all the labs. She started calling all the doctors we'd ever seen over the last few years and talking about what was happening, what was going on. And there's a doctor in Florida who said, hey, I think that Dane's got a viral load that is living in his colon that's not going to see in his blood work. And they need to give him an antiviral or this is going to kill him. There's nothing he could do. Now, they'd already given me antibiotics for a bacterial infection. They'd already given me steroids, all these things. Nothing was working. So my mom called the insurance company, the doctor from Florida called the insurance company, said, Hey, if you don't give this kid an antiviral, he's going to die. But we had no evidence to show it was a viral issue. We couldn't prove anything. Right. That was something that advised me had taken over. Well, they eventually gave me a sample. And within two days of getting the sample, I started to come to. So, and then, uh, about, about 10 to 15 days later, Yeah, mom, right? I know. Seriously, Ooh, my mom saved moms. my life. God, my mom saved my life. She hadn't been there. She had been my, I'd be dead. 100% I'd Because be dead. she wouldn't have been like, let me call, let me call. And she called and, she, and the one guy, yeah. one person had one suggestion one that made the difference. This is where perseverance at every level matters. Yeah. yeah, and it needed a doctor to call the insurance company to scare him and say, you better give him. Because it was a, the sample was five grand. Right. Just a sample. Because these antiviral, like some of them are yeah, extremely expensive. The one yep. they gave to the president for Corona, like 3,000. Yep. Like these things are very pricey that it's- very. it's yeah, very. But it, it saved my life. And I remember at that point when I was in the hospital, I had already gotten interested in natural medicine. So I had already um, started talking, uh, applied for this natural medicine school. And I was working with these natural professors because I started feeling like, and this was a big shift for me mentally. I started realizing that changing my life and being self-empowered would only help everything I wanted in my life. It only help my kids in the future, only help with my relationships, taking care of my family everyone. So I started really realizing that I wanted to be self-empowered. I wanted to understand how I could use functional, natural medicine, acupuncture, any of that to better myself. And so when I came to, I called my natural professor and I said, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm here in the hospital, told me what was going on. 
he was overwhelmed by the situation, but, you know, I talked to him about what he thought and what the doctors were saying. And he said, there's, you know, he's not much, he gave me his opinion. And then I decided to check myself out of the hospital, got in a wheelchair. I got, I checked myself out despite what they were going to do because my mom wasn't furious. Cause I, if she wasn't there, they would have, I would have died. So she didn't have much faith in that hospital as well. Right. So I checked myself out and I was housebound. Uh, I couldn't walk. I had such muscle atrophy. I had to basically relearn to walk. I dropped to 122 pounds from 185. I'm six and you're two. tall, right? Yeah, I'm six two. And yeah, that's I, not a good weight. <laughs> 100, yeah, 100. Yeah, I was, and I'm. I mean, right now I'm 182 pounds. You could, I mean, I'm pretty. I'm a pretty lean guy. Yeah. And I was 122 pounds. Like you know, and uh, I was bed rested. I was in extreme pain, especially coming off that high dose of Dilaudid. I'm still on oral chemotherapy. And it took about a month for me to be able to interpret, like listen to people. I mean, I was drooling from the mouth, basically. I was stuck on the couch, um, in extreme pain. It was, it was, an ex- I mean, I, I, it, was, uh, it was extreme, extreme, extreme. So about, it took me about nine to 12 months. Um, nine to 12 months later, I was uh, drug-free. I was about 85% symptom-free. And uh, I had built my own unique answer for healing myself. Yeah. And I know, I know everyone has that. And I know you work with people all over the world on this. So what yeah. one thing for someone else might need to be eliminated another or whatever. Yep. Uh, what did you find for you in that first year? Because listen, uh, from going in that situation in the hospital to yep. being 85% symptom free a year later with that yep. dire circumstance, what, what did that, I know you refined it later. You're probably like, yeah. oh, let me add something, but what was that year? What did you do that made the difference? Great question. And the keys to the success in that year was number one, I stopped looking for the answer and I built my answer. Yes. So I researched everything and I cherry picked and utilized and like almost like my own perfect symphony. Mm-hmm. I learned how to play the A note, the C note, the D note. I know the different versions of the D, the C note, the A note. And I started saying which one works for me and why. I started making sense of what the root cause was. Because I wasn't working, because I wasn't leaving the house, I was reading probably four to five hours a day. I was meditating, I was reading, I was doing the Epson. So I started realizing that I could compound my effects. See, in the beginning, I had tried a diet and if the diet didn't give me results in four days, I quit. Right. Or I got overwhelmed. So now I was learning how to move from one stone to the next and kind of use the momentum of every effort and compound them into a greater healing energy. And I started realizing the power of the mind. I remember I was about Six weeks into my program, my mom was giving me all this worry, all this fear, all this doubt. And I said, mom, shut up. I, you can't do any. And I started yelling and getting angry. And I immediately got pain in my stomach. Immediately, as I started getting angry and out of control, Trust, yeah. I noticed pain. So I said, wait, this, this mental thing, this health, that gets real. So I started, the, the, one of the key aspects for me was I d- decided to commit to the idea that if something couldn't hurt me, if implementing something couldn't hurt me and it could only help me, I would do it. Mm-hmm. So I prayed every morning and night, every morning and every night I prayed. I didn't care who was listening. I got over that fear too. I'll pray with you guys right now. I don't care. <laughs> that energy is powerful. I meditated every day and I learned that I wasn't just meditating to get myself into a parasympathetic nervous system. I was in meditating on my intuition. I was meditating on my creativity. I was meditating on what my move was going to be and what was hurting me and what wasn't. I was meditating on how I was feeling from yesterday. I journaled everything I did for 185 days. Meaning I, so I basically constructed this daily format where I had a bunch of check boxes and, and what I ate and, and health, I called them health boosters. And I started refining this, this daily effort and I would print it out and I would get into a, a blue, a, a binder Every day, I take about 15 minutes and I'd write out what I ate, how I felt with it, how many bowel movements I had, how much diarrhea I had, did I have urgency, did I see blood, how much did I weigh morning and night? Because I want to see how much I was, so I would wake up at 138, I'd go to bed at 142, and I'd wake up at 137. So I wanted to see those, so I started being Dr. Dane. Mm -hmm. So I started, I would, and my, I would see my patient Dane twice a day for 10 minutes. (laughs) And that just it's like, that's a great way to look at it as you should. And doctors yeah. can't be there all the time. Um, let me ask you this real quick. How many yeah. people are suffering in the world with Crohn's and colitis? Do we know any rough, what are the rough stats on that? Millions um, yeah. in the world. I think just in the regions that, that we work with in Europe, Australia, New Zealand, North America, we're dealing with about uh, 10 to 15 million with Crohn's and colitis and IBS. It's probably about 10 times that number. Now, um, does IBS 
go hand in hand with Crohn's and colitis or is it completely separate? Can some people have IBS but not have Crohn's colitis or are they all kind of interchangeable? They're all, I mean, really, in my opinion, I think a lot of them are interchangeable because we don't understand the true pathology of IBD or IBS. We're not really understanding what's happening here. IBS is, is basically an elementary form of IBD, but we're not seeing the inflammatory markers. We're not seeing the problems in the colon doing a colonoscopy or a CT scan. So without the actual physical damage or the CRP or, or the sed rate or the calprotectin elevated, we're calling it IBS. Okay. I just want to say to the audience too, who's listening, uh, the owner of this podcast, Mark Sisson has said many times and before he went on his paleo primal journey, he had IBS that ran his life. He said, if he, uh, you know, like before, like Google cell phone maps, he, if he had to drive into LA for something from Malibu, he would have to like map out where the gas stations were on his way in case. And, you know, it ran apparently several years of his life. And it, it was funny because I think, you know, again, he hit it too, as everybody kind of probably would in that scenario until he uh, did this experiment of like, I'm going to quit grains for a month. And then he was like, oh my God, my arthritis went away. My IBS sets run my life, like all this sort of stuff. So it's, it's just really amazing. And, and also what we're willing to put up with um, before we finally go, you know, this, this isn't right. Maybe I need to really look into this. Um, yeah. So Crohn's colitis, is it considered an autoimmune disorder? Yes. It's is there an actual marker and a test for that or no? Yeah, there are different markers. There are some genetic markers you can you can do to look at, but mostly you're looking at inflammatory markers, things like okay, the so CRP sed rate. So it's um, not a specific like RA marker or a colo colitis like. There antibody. are some genetic markers that some people are looking at, but that's more in the functional world. So right. in the conventional medicine, not so much. Sometimes doctors do look at what's called your anti-Saccharomyces cerevisiae antibodies, your ASCA. Okay. Okay. to depict whether it's Crohn's versus colitis or usually diagnosis through a CT scan, a, a colonoscopy or ask a results are, are usually the ways they're doing it. And How long shock. have you been like, are, do you have any symptoms now or is it just like you're at 99% and it's occasional or what's your life like? That's a great question. Um, I have, I have human symptoms. I might get a little bloating. I might get a little cramping. So you I just have the normal stuff we all have. Yeah, I might get a little diarrhea, but the trauma of being a Crohn's colitis victim is what I've removed. I have chose to live in a reality. Well, also my lab works great. I really, sure. I have one to three bowel movements a day. They're fully formed. I get no cramping, no bloating. Uh, right. I can eat a variety of food. I could go eat a large pizza pizza right now with a six pack of beer and run 10 miles and I'll be fine. Oh my gosh. Well, how nice is that to be able to go do something like that for the hell of it when you know you when you were in that former state, there was no way. There was no way to do that. But I I, I have practiced and I've done that. I've gone out and stayed up to three in the morning drinking and I've eaten tons of gluten. Up. And and that's why I called my the program Shield. My body can handle that, but that's not good for me and that's not good for anyone listening. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't care if you've been diagnosed A, B, or C or nothing. It's not good for humans. What we're literally looking for is we're looking for the ability to be able to defend ourselves against stress like we did when we were kids. You right. want to have prom night and stay up till four in the morning, drink an alcohol and then recover from it. That's what you want. It's not good for anybody. Right, right. We were looking for the ability to recover. I'm also at the point mentally where I don't want pizza. I don't want alcohol. I want to feel good. I want to move up towards my dreams. I want to attack what I can do in a day. That's right. what excites me. That's what gets me up. Drinking beer and, 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 and eating pizza and eating McDonald's, that, has, that gives me no satisfaction. What, what are the, the what are the, I mean, obviously there's lots of different foods and things that you eat, but what were the, yeah. the, what are some of the main ones for you that you're like, okay, I just don't do those. Yes. Um, gluten, right. Nowadays, gluten. I just don't do gluten anymore. And I rarely have alcohol because it just gets in the way. Right. Yep. But if I Agreed. want to, here's the difference. When I was younger and I was sick and a lot of people out there, they can't, I can't, I'm choosing not to, that takes the prison of disease and it frees you to change. And I need to, and I want. So the foods that still days I'm saying, ah, I really, I, I, I can't, I can eat whatever I want. I could eat whatever I want right now. And I'll, I might see some undigested food if I got too hard on certain foods. Um, if I eat too much gluten, I might get bloated. I might get a little extra gas. I might get a little extra like swell. I might get more brain fog. I might get some acne come up if I keep mm -hmm. eating all that crap. Right. But I also have things in my protocol that I can use things like glutalic acid to help reduce gluten if I ever come in contact with it. I can use digestive enzymes. I can use things to help me break down fat. I can use binders to help soak up uh, um, uh, toxins 
or use like what I call a BCPA shake after I eat what's called a celebration meal. Because in our program, we don't cheat, we only celebrate. So when we're celebrating, we Love can it. use something like a BCPA shake to help reduce the damage from a celebration meal. Right. I love so, the celebration. Meal yeah. I, I mean, I, really, I think the big thing that we're missing here, guys, is I, I put a lot more emphasis on how you feel about your life and how you feel about your health. Because the perspective is all happiness is. Perspective is all success is. You can make $5 a year and you feel be like the most, the most successful person. person in the world. That's right. And you can be uh, making a million dollars a year and feel like you're broke. And I think, uh, I think it's universal just because yeah. uh, is that the tr true success is happiness. So that doesn't matter. Yeah. Like you can be making five bucks, you could be a billionaire, but there's a lot of billionaires that aren't happy. Yeah. So really, I think everyone's searching for happiness. They might go through different means to get it, but that is the ultimate success. So that's how you define it. Mindset's so important. It's really tough because, you know, so many thyroid patients, uh, an ex-thyroid patient like myself, although of course I take thyroid hormones, but, yeah. you know, all that suffering all those years, you come to have these stories about yourself. Yeah. about what you can or can't do or what you think might be affecting you, even though it's absolutely not true. I've heard that in a lot of ways. Or you wake up every morning and you're like, oh, I gotta lose weight again, lose weight. And it's, it's, it's horrible. What a terrible way to start the day. Just telling your body to F off and yeah. it's your enemy. Yeah. And uh, you know, my second bout that I had to fix with hypothyroidism, I had gotten into the mindset stuff in between the first and the second one. And it was invaluable to me on the second one. I knew to adopt these certain things. I had some resources there. And that's why I mentioned it to people because, you know, you get, it's a negativity spiral. Your brain's not often working probably in, you know, case of Crohn's and colitis too. There's a lot of brain fog issues. It's depressing. Uh, in your situation, when you're in dire pain or in a thyroid situation, they can't even get out of bed for three hours or they're passing out too. So, I mean, this is, it kind of, it breeds a really rough mindset that has to be addressed. And I kind of, you know, I touch on it sometimes with patients when we only have a limited time and say, we got to deal with this. If we're going to work on it. We'll work on it separately, but it has to be worked on. Yes, it does. And it, the thing with, with mindset is it's really coming down to a choice of your values. It's coming down to a choice of how you are choosing to perceive things. The, ga the, the glass can always be half empty. It can always be what you don't have. It can always be what you have. And it's up to us to paint the picture of our own lives and stop looking and comparing so much and just deciding what your happiness looks like and going for it. And a lot of it is just, if you can simplify what you want, then life gets easier and life gets happier. If you think of the happiest person you know, they take adversity and they find the good in it. They simplify things that need to get done. They don't become over worried about things that they can't control. Yeah. They've, they have conditioned and trained themselves that they'd rather feel good about it. They'd rather not worry about it. The happiest people tend to make things simple. And I tend to be overanalytical. I tend to be uh, high stress. I tend to be push myself way too hard and try to work way too hard and burn myself out. So, but because of that analytical, I also can analyze what happiness looks like and how I, I, I like to look at people and really say, that person seems really happy to me. What is their foundation of how they're approaching life's adversities? And the pain found in thyroid and Crohn's and colitis can teach you a lot about what happiness looks like because before I needed gluten, I needed alcohol, I needed to be able to go to the bar, I needed to be able to socialize with my friends, doing things that weren't good for me. I needed to limit my, honestly, my, my life potential because I needed to be loved by them. I needed to be accepted by them. So Crohn's was, to heal Crohn's and colitis, I not only had to heal my gut, I had to heal the, the, the brokenness of Dane. I had to heal who was going on with my spirit because Crohn's and colitis simply at the end of the day, and this is what really drove me. It was just asking me to be my best self. That's all it was asking. And I said, wait a minute, Dane, if being, if eating this, I don't eat a diet, by the way. See, these are the mindset changes, guys. Stop with the diets and choose a lifestyle that makes you happy and healthy. Because you're not going to be happy if you're not healthy. You're not going to be healthy if you're not happy. Happy and healthy. Choose a lifestyle let go and just choose things. So I started choosing and I said, wait a minute, is eating this way and living this way and, and researching these things and involving me with these certain people and getting away from the alcohol or, or the late nights and all this craziness. Why do I feel I need that? Why do I need happiness in that? And how can I direct my happiness towards other things that actually I really want in my life? Because if you gave me a billion dollars and money wasn't a factor and health was a factor, what would I spend my time doing? 
I'd still want a family. I'd still want to fall in love. I'd still want to travel the world. I'd still want to look my best and feel my best. I'd still want to work with a nutritionist. I'd still want to work with a personal trainer. So it was like, wait a minute, hold on. I actually want this. This isn't a, this isn't a, 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 a this isn't a prison. This is not something that I This have, isn't a I consolation want. prize life I'm living. This is, yeah. yeah. This is actually what I, so I all of a sudden I churned something that I was being forced to do, which I was miserable because I had to be forced to do it. And I started changing that energy and that motion, shifting it into something that I realized I wanted to do. And I started like, I always wanted to work out, but I wanted to work out because I wanted to look good in case I got booked for a series regular. I wanted to have good skin so I looked good on camera. I wanted to look good so I could attract girls that I liked. I had reasons, see, I had desires attached to my fitness, attached to running five miles, attached to killing myself in the gym. I had no desires attached to eating well. So when I attached desire to what Crohn's and Kleist was asking of me, the prison started disappearing and I started getting happy because this is what I wanted. I want to eat this way. I don't want to do what you're doing. I want to do what I'm doing. And I'm so excited about it. I'm going to inspire you to be more like me. Dang, what are you, you, you've got good energy. What are you doing lately? You look great. What, what are you eating? You're just, you know, you're, 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 everything's taken off. What are you doing? Oh, let me show you. So exciting. Let me show you. This is really cool stuff. Instead of, hey guys, I have, you know, I got Crohn's disease. I can't eat gluten anymore. I'm sorry. Like, sucks, man. I just got diagnosed. You know, it's my life now. So I just got to live like this. And everyone goes, oh, I'm sorry. And I'm in that, 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 like literally just replayed a thousand conversations. <laughs> like that yeah. is exactly what happens. Yeah. And then, and then what we're doing, this is the crazy thing we do as a society. We enroll others in our sadness. And yes. what are you doing? You're telling them why they shouldn't be gluten-free. You're telling them why they shouldn't eat that way. And we can all right. eat. Some of us are gluten-free. Some of us aren't. Some are even paleo, vegan, whatever. It doesn't right. matter. Whatever you're inspired by, you want to inspire your friends and family because if you're not, what is the whole world who's not eating healthy? What is their perception of healthy eating? That it's isolating, it's boring, that you have no fun, and it's going to suck and you're going to have no good memories. Yeah. So if you can have your best memories, if you can have tons of fun, if you can be laughing your ass off while you're eating that paleo meal or whatever meal you are, then you are actually enrolling at your whole, you are the law of attraction. Just like the secret, I don't know if you read that book, you are you are literally attracting mm -hmm. everyone into your world to live like you, and that's how I went from doing that to building one of the most powerful Crohn's disease communities in the world, because I literally just show people what they want despite Crohn's and colitis. I live how I want to live. If I didn't, if I never got diagnosed, I wouldn't want to change one thing to the way I live today. That's yep, the difference. I agree. If I could go back in time, I would not eliminate this experience. I wouldn't yeah. for what it's brought us or you, me, and, you know, now speaking of your success story, but it is so nice. And I know you get this too, you know, you coach people all over the world. The wonderful yeah. thing is when you get the calls of like, oh my God, my, I didn't feel like I had to fall asleep the past three days. Yeah. I have, I feel like this, I'm, I'm happier. Like I, yeah. you know, and you start to see the progress. Give us a couple of 180 turnaround clients you've had to, to, to inspire some other people. Obviously your story is already very inspiring, but we'd love to yeah. hear a few more, you know, kind of yeah. from the bank there. Absolutely. We've had, we've had a few hundred people with massive testimony. We've had uh, about uh, eight, I'd say 80 to 90% of our clients get massive results. And that 10% can have the mentality or these very extreme situations. We get clients who are, some of them are in life-threatening positions. We've got uh, four-year-olds, we've had 60-year-olds. Uh, so I'll give you a few. Uh, recently during lockdown, we had a mom who uh, it lives in Paris with her four-year-old daughter who was diagnosed from UC at 18 months old, 18 months old. They've had no response. They've used all these drugs on this little girl, no response. Mm -hmm. So she uh, started with us and she, uh, this is all locked down, COVID can't leave the house. And we taught her all from her home and her uh, daughter as of two weeks ago was symptom free and they've never had these type of results in her entire life. One bowel movement a day, no stay off steroids now, no pain, no blood, no urge. No poor pain. little girl, I'm so happy. It's a four for year old her. baby girl, four year old baby girl. So I that just that sleep. warmed my heart completely. That yeah, was because a you know what, and then what makes me cheer up because you just prevented what you led yeah. into that was unbeknownst to your family. We're not blaming anyone. It's just yeah. you as a kid, some of these symptoms, not knowing what you know now, and you are locking it in right now, so this kid doesn't have to go down that trajectory that mother must have just been shedding tears of <laughs> it's 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 unbelievable to see some of these moms we had another mom um she called me up they didn't have much money so we used our nonprofit to help raise the money we raised them about five thousand dollars 
and I and uh, I called. She was in the ER. She had been fighting Crohn's since she was seven years old. She was uh, 23 now. Her name was Olivia. She had been on so many drugs and chemos. All her hair had fallen out. Her mom would go check on her at night to make sure she was still breathing because they thought she could die at any time. I mean, this was these are severe cases. Obviously, I've I've, I've worked with hundreds of people, so we could talk an hour just about these these reversals. Sure. I mean, we we really pride ourselves on impact. Um, getting the results. So she, I talked to her, she's standard American, never eaten different, never done any different, tried every drug. And so we put her on a, a, a customized protocol. We say, try this, do that. And we don't know what's going to happen. Every, every person's different. She calls me back a week later and she goes, Dane, I'm not even kidding you. Seven days later, I feel 80% better. She goes, I can't even believe it. Her mom is seeing her glow. She, all of a sudden this passion for nutrition and mindset and supplements starts exploding. Because the moment she got an inch, she just dove head right. first into the whole thing. It's been three years now, long, beautiful hair, healthy, symptom-free, drug-free, traveling, dating. She's 25 years old. You know, we had another guy, Brian. He's had ulcerative colitis since he was, I think, 18 years old. He got his colon removed when he was 32. Mm-hmm. He uh, has been on Humera since he was like 35. And uh, he was now, he came to me at 59 years old with 35 years of ulcerative colitis. He had already had his colon removed. He was already on chronic biologics for 20 years. Okay. And he was going to the bathroom. I kid you not 30 times a day. So he had a colostomy bag. Is that? No, the doctor said we had to go to a permanent stoma. And that's where he said no more. And he went on, scoured the internet, found me, called me grilled me for like an hour and a half because he had tried so many things and failed didn't believe it was right he's like what kind of charlatan <laughs> he's yeah. Probably, yeah yeah so and you're I, like bring it you're like bring it i went through it <laughs> well yeah it's it's tough i mean it's also because i'm you know i was i was his private i was his private coach for for about eight months uh, i'm still i still work this about two years now but eight months in we got him down and this is after getting his colon removed okay so he's going to have certain more urgencies sure. and stuff without a colon um, he's down to four to five bowel movements a day. He's dropped his medication, his, his need of medication, um, by about 60%. So he's now taking, he went from every two weeks on his biologics to every eight to 10 weeks now. Um, his, his sugar, blood sugar levels have now stabilized because he's also pre-diabetic. So he's been able to reduce his diabetic, uh, medications. He has no cramping, no blood. He sleeps through the night and he has four normal bowel movements. He can eat at restaurants. He can eat he says 10 times as much as he could before he started the program without any issues. And this is all done. He's like, he's house. like, I'd like my 35 years back. Please. Yeah. And if yeah, anyone, wants to, get if anyone wants to see these, they can go to YouTube. We have video testimonies, long 20 minute video testimonies with our clients talking about mm-hmm. their results and what they did. And these were not easy. These are not easy situations. These are not where I, you know, it's magic where we just gave them a few supplements who changed their diet. This is, this yeah. is like a chess match. And sure. what we do essentially is we see someone in a chess match and they might hire us and we literally sit next to them in the chess game and play wherever they are in the game. Yep. And, and sometimes, we, and I know you oh. found this too, sometimes it's one dumb, cheap chess move. It's yep. a dumb thing. It's, um, you, oh, yeah. you're just missing that, or you just need to quit that. And they're like, oh my God, I've been to 500 doctors. And that's all that was. You're like, yeah, sometimes it's so yep. simple. Oof, and, right. um, you yep. know, and I think the important thing too, and, I, and, and in a minute, you know, tell us, We'll, you know, of course, put the website and everything in the show notes. Um, working with someone who's been through it. This is why the best selling oh. thyroid books are written by patients because we know how it feels. We understand how, the, how you know, the dosing, what it feels, temps. We understand all of the stuff. And also, we were left in the dust like you were. So we had to all go figure it out ourselves. Yep. <laughs> That's why exactly. I wrote books about it. Exactly. So I would only want to go to someone in this kind of situation who had been through it, someone who'd solved their RA, who solved their MS, who solved their Crohn's colitis. So yes. anyone watching or listening, if you know anyone and you hear them mention IBS, Crohn's colitis, send them this episode. You never know. I had someone whose life is being saved because they're not going to be hypo anymore by, you know, someone heard a podcast I did or something. Then they told Sally, Sally told the, and then, you know, it got to her, she called me and I caught something that like, again, it was like, it's a dumb thing, but the woman's been suffering for like 10 years. You never know how information like this can affect and impact people. And I know it's the other thing that's hard too, is when people are sick in a chronic state, and I'm sure everyone probably was like, Oh, what about this? What about that? What about that? And it's hard to be on the side when someone's going through something and you're like, I want to make a suggestion, but I know you got in a hundred, but sometimes just sending them a link going, Hey, listen, this guy, you know, cured himself of this. He's, he's fixed himself of this. Uh, you should listen to what he has to say. You never know how, how 
far reaching it could be. So on that, in that vein, please tell us um, how we can work with you. I know you, yeah. do you still work with people one-on-one, -on -one, yes? Yes, I do. It's a passion of mine because every time I hear someone who's in that corner, it kind of like wells up in me because I was fighting for my life and I had no yeah. help. The, 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 the reason I built Crone Spice Lifestyle is because I needed desperately Crone Spice Lifestyle myself. I needed it. I just built what I needed. I didn't go off to build up a huge multi-million dollar company. That wasn't what I was about after. I was after building a resource that actually could do what I needed. So um, how it works is everyone gets some form of private consulting. We don't just give you a video program and a broad analysis of what supplements and diet take. We actually work with every single person. So, um, you know, we don't take on hundreds and hundreds of people until we can grow and we can scale. So uh, right now we usually take on, you know, uh, uh, 10, 20, sometimes 30 people a month, but every single person gets one-on-one -on -one time from, uh, from me or one of my coaches or sports specialists. Number two is all of our um, sports specialists, our coaches, myself, we all have Crohn's Clytus ourselves. So we know exactly what you're going through. We have a, a, a nurse practitioner on staff, uh, a PharmD doctor also. So we are also clinically trained. We interpret uh, blood work, CMP, CBC, quantitative PCR stool test, organic acid test. We interpret food sensitivity. We can order all your lab work to your home, pretty much all of North America and Europe. Working on Philippines, India, and Australia. We have some stuff going on there too we can definitely do. Uh, we heal people from home. We teach you how to do it all from home. We can get everything shipped to home. Uh, we can do lab work, the supplements, all of that. Um, uh, everything we do is customized. So when you do a program, we start you off with generic philosophies of how to feel and we customize it, whether you want to be a vegan or paleo. We have massive success stories with vegans. We have massive success stories with paleo. We have massive success with keto, all of it. So we look at the chess match of why you should do a certain diet, why you should take certain things, and we integrate that for you and teach you why. The biggest thing that was missing with me with naturopath doctors and medical doctors is the lack of understanding why. They told me what to do, but because I didn't understand why, I was helpless when I needed to refine. Mm -hmm. So the keys that we really look for for success and why we have such a massive uh, success rate is because number one, we help you stabilize first and foremost. If there's a sense of urgency to your health, your, your chance of failure is much greater because if you can keep something up every single day and it's simplified and you don't need to go to the hospital and you can be able to go to work and you can hang with your friends and your life is stable, then you've given yourself time to try, learn, tweak and go and move forward. But the urgency of the matter has to be squashed as soon as possible, mentally and physically. So yes. We help you learn the idea of how to stabilize, the idea of what a cure is versus remission versus flare, and try to work on your perspective of what it is you're dealing with so you can let go of the trauma. Mm -hmm. And so you can also, breaking down food. So we don't do diets. We do what's called food philosophy. Mm -hmm. Food philosophy is to look at any plate of food and assess its risk for you. I don't care if it's paleo, vegan, vegetables, all of that. What is the risk? I, I assess those risks, risks regularly. There I'm like, go. is that cake, piece of cake worth it right now? Yeah. And then some days, <laughs> no, it's not. Some days it's not worth it. Some days it's not worth it. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of times when the paleo diet was like, what are the problems with grains? Why would grains potentially hurt? That's what we need to understand. Yes. Again, because if people don't understand the philosophy behind it, you know, uh, or yeah. anything about the nutrition, and again, doc, this is what doctors don't know, except for usually functional doctors, some of them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you got to get to the why you got And that's my biggest thing as you are too, is that in being a coach, you're also educating because that patient, that client can uh, get better and go along their way. But if they have a hiccup, they need to know what yep. we know, maybe not yep. at the depths, but at some deeper level than they're coming to us with. And that's probably... Uh, the most valuable thing I tell my clients is like, you're going to have to know this. Maybe not like me, but at a certain level. What if your doctor retires? Then what are you going to do? How are you going to go? If you don't know anything about that, you're going to go come back to me for a tutorial. I mean, you're going to have to figure it out and you're going to have to learn. And I, like I said to you, when we talked on your live, if someone diagnoses you, you got to become an expert the, the best you can. Better hit your star to one that already figured it. Hit your wagon, right? To, to someone like you or, or the other miraculous yeah. people out there. I'll mention Palmer Kipola for uh, muscular sclerosis and yes. uh, sorry, multiple sclerosis, and also uh, Courtney Chef Courtney Cantos for RA. These are yep. people that have they were like us and they yes. did it. Yep. Um, so I just want to commend you on your work. Obviously, you. this is a test becomes a testimony, and so everyone can go to Crohn's Colitis Lifestyle.com. Yes. 
Crohn's Clients Lifestyle, they can look at, we have an online program that includes some private coaching. And then we have upgraded long-term private coaching. I work with clients privately. Uh, we have coaches uh, in Europe and in the United States that work with coaches privately. Uh, we have our sports specialists there to help you along the way as well. Uh, we have an international store we just launched yesterday. So we'll be able to get products in the United States to Europe. Um, right now, we're seeing about 40% less cost than what it costs in Europe. A lot of really good products around the world are extremely expensive or impossible to get. So our next thing is to make sure that people can get the very best medical grade supplements or herbs that we make in America or North America and be able to get them across the world at a, at a reasonable price. Uh, so we really take pride in making sure that things are affordable and, and, and usable. And again, you have lots of content on social, content on social media. Right. Yes. Just yes. YouTube, yes. Instagram, yep. IGTV, go in there. There's so much great free content he has provided for you guys. Uh, yes. So many great interviews, just little bits. Yes, absolutely. We have, we have tons of training. They can also download our free ebook, Six Tips to Healing Crohn's Colitis, which starts looking at how to measure it out and simplify it. And the last thing I'll say for anyone out there who's really excited, who listened this full time and really feels like they have something that they want to do with Crohn's Colitis, I want to speak to you really quickly. And I want to let you know that don't underestimate where your mind is, because if the adversity of a speed bump, like something not going your way, you know, if you can calm that down and you can breathe with it and you can allow yourself to look at solutions and try different things and give yourself space to try and change and critique, you will succeed. The fear, the pain, and the urgency of things is what really overwhelms us. But if we can find that simplicity, if you can calm your mind down and you can really just decide what happiness looks like and go for it, you might find that you can be much happier today, right now, than you thought, because you can do a lot more than you think. And, and I just wish someone had told me that. And someone could just say, like, you got it. You can do it. Build your answer. Stop taking what everyone says is church and start cherry picking it and find your unique answer. And when you simplify it and you journal it, you will find results. And it's just realize that the trauma of not being good enough is what's keeping you so angry and upset every day. And there's a lot more than just the symptoms behind this. And just go towards that happiness and find that spiritual happiness and keep connecting with those that inspire you like L. Because man, that conditioning mentally will help you manifest great things. What a great closer. Thank you so much for joining us. We will put all the links to connect with uh, you in the show notes. And uh, thank you so much. We hope to have you back on again. And I uh, look forward to also, we were both on the What We Crave Summit, yes. right? Uh, so yes. check that out. That's a really fun summit, all about you know emotional eating and a bunch of experts and people like us talking about what we went through with eating yes. issues and mindsets. So that's a really great one. And uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Al. Thank you.